Hello everyone, my name is Travis Stockelman and welcome to another video from Nazarene Caffeine. If you've never been to this channel before, you need to know that we make Bible-based content and Bible-based videos, uh, blog posts, things like that, to try to help people grow in their walk with Christ. If you have been here, you'll notice that I'm in the same background from last week, I've got the same background, uh, that's because I recorded both videos on the same day. Um, Again, it's just making things easier on me and making the best of the situation I have. But if you haven't watched last week's video about five tips for studying your Bible, then you might want to go check that out uh, before you check this out because I kind of gave an introduction there to what I'm doing. Basically, to recap really quickly, um, if you were my disciple, this is what I would tell you. Right. I had ten tips for studying your Bible. I couldn't fit them all into one video, so I decided to break them up into two. So, if I were discipling you, I would tell you to do the five things that I said in the last video, and I would tell you to do these five things, right? in addition to any individual instruction I, I would try to give you uh, to help guide you as you study scripture. So, without any further ado, let's dive into the five, uh, five tips that I would give you this week, right? So, number one for this week. Read the Bible out loud. Now, there's there's a statistic out there, and I don't remember the, the exact numbers, but basically, we, we read something and we tend to forget it very quickly, right? But if we read something and say something, we tend to remember more. And if we read something, say something, and hear something, then we tend to remember it even more, and so on, right? So the more senses that you... Uh, have going at the same time, the more likely you are to remember Scripture. And we are, you know, we we are not supposed to be um, forgetting what God has, has said in His Word. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to go around shouting at the top of your lungs. Let me tell you something. So, if you read Psalm 1, and th this is an interesting fact I, I learned from uh, studying Psalm 1, actually, uh, so if you read Psalm 1, you'll read, happy is the one who does, something along these lines, happy is the one who does not walk and step with the wicked, stand in the path of sinners, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but whose delight is in the law, the Torah of Yahweh, and on his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by streams of water, and so on. That word meditates that I used just a second ago is actually... Uh, it doesn't mean like the modern notion of meditation. It means to make a low muttering sound, like you're reciting something to yourself, right? It's it's supposed to aid in memorization. We're, we're supposed to be so entrenched in God's Word and in memorizing God's Word that it, it encapsulates every one of our senses. And so I would encourage you to take the advice of Psalm 1 in that and read this out loud to yourself even if you if you're at the grocery store again you don't have to say it incredibly loud but even if you whisper under your breath i i do that from time to time i'll i'll be in the grocery store picking up something or something along those lines and and i'll be you know blessed is the one who's not blessed. and I'll, I'll i'll repeat it to myself right and it's a reminder to me that everything i do has to be about god and that scripture should affect every part of my life, not just my script, my time where I'm studying scripture. Um, it, it also helps if you are spending time just in scripture study to say it aloud, because again, it helps you retain what you're saying, right? If that seems weird, it shouldn't be, right? Number two, have an accountability partner of some kind. Uh, whether this is in a group setting, um, one thing that helps me out is that we have a Thursday night small group, right? And every week, uh, this young adult group that I meet with has a, an assigned pass, scripture passage to read, right? And so right now we're going through Genesis. So it might be Genesis 22, 23, and 24 that we're supposed to read, right? And we have to come prepared with insights that we gain throughout the week from our own study of this. And then we discuss all of these at the small group. Um, this helps hold us accountable, right? Because uh, if you haven't read it, you're not going to have any insights. And you're it's, it's going to be easy to tell. So... Um, whether it's in a group setting like that, or whether you call someone up, I, I know people who have called up someone and said, hey, you text me every day and I'll text you every day reminding you to read scripture, right? 
have an accountability partner because that will hold you accountable. That will keep you um, on the right track in your study of scripture. Uh, if you remember from the last video, it takes 15 to 17 minutes um, a day to read the Bible in a year. So, yeah. Um, number three, memorize scripture. Memorize it. And again, this goes back to my first point where you read it aloud because it helps you memorize this. Uh, scripture is not something that we're just supposed to read and walk away and forget. It's something that's supposed to be so entrenched in us that we we live it out almost instinctively, right? Uh, it transforms us. It changes the way we, we do things. And it's supposed to do that. It's supposed to help help us live a life that is godly and pleasing to God. If we don't have scripture memorized, if we read scripture and then just walk away and, and forget about it, then how are we supposed to live out what it says, right? And so this doesn't mean that, that there are there are ways to commit entire books of the Bible to memory, um, and I can cover that in a later video. Uh, believe it or not, there are, but um, but it takes dedication and it takes um, it it takes commitment. And so I would encourage you to memorize scripture, even if you're not memorizing an entire book. Uh, you don't have to go out and memorize the entire book of Titus, right? But if you're reading through scripture and you find a key verse that's like a summary of what you are reading that day, it doesn't help to commit that to memory. Um, repeat it to yourself um, until, until you get it, or use the Dwell Bible app that I talked about in the last video and set that on that one particular verse and listen to it over and over and over until it's committed to memory, right? It really will help you. It really will help you live out, um, what you read. Number four, context, context, context. And this is this is what I'm talking about in relation to studying scripture, right? If we look at everything from a 21st century American context, we are not going to get the message of half of scripture, right? So there's uh, there's a tool or there, there's an art rather that, that uh, people are taught in Bible college and seminary. I was taught when I went through Bible college and I'm, I'm having to go through other classes on it in seminary. It's called the art of hermeneutics, right? And it simply, it simply put means that you approach things in a certain way, right? Um, you, you look at scripture, you interpret scripture based on the context that it's in. This called exegesis, um, as opposed to what's called eisegesis, which means you read into the text something that you want to see there, right? So, Hermeneutics is is the kind of the think of hermeneutics as kind of the toolkit that we use to get at the context, right? It's the approach that we take. It it's not in and of itself the end all be all, but it's 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 a methodology. It's it's a like I said, the toolkit that that helps us get at the meaning of scripture. And one of the key things that people who practice uh, biblical interpretation for a living look at is the grammatical, historical, and social context in which the passages were written. Now, this is where apps like what I mentioned in the last video, Bible Gateway, Bible Study Tools, commentaries, things like that will come in handy because they will provide you with a lot of this information, right? If, if we don't understand the context of something, then we don't understand what it meant to the original audience. And if we don't understand what it meant to the original audience, then we have a harder time understanding what it means to us today, right? Because the meaning of Scripture doesn't change. The application will from the first century to the 21st century. And none of that should scare you. Um, everyone has a hermeneutic. Everyone practices hermeneutics, whether they realize it or not, whether you're reading the Bible or another book. We, we read, um, for example, something from Shakespeare differently than something from a historian, right? Or, or a scientific treatise written by someone like Stephen Hawking, right? We, we read those two things entirely differently because we instinctively understand there's a difference between the two. And so that's what hermeneutics gets at. And that's, that's um, 
a solid thing to do. And so if, if you, um, are, are troubled or scared by the idea of, oh, I've got to do extra research to understand this, uh, I wouldn't be okay. Um, just remember that if something is difficult for you to understand, there's no shame in going to someone else who's more experienced, like someone who's written commentaries on, on those particular passages of scripture, or a pastor, or an elder, or or some other church leader, and say, hey, I, I don't fully understand what Jesus was saying here. Can you help me out? Is there is there something contextually that I'm missing, right? Um, did Jesus literally mean um, that a camel could go through an, the eye of a needle, or did Jesus was Jesus speaking about a particular gate? Here's a hint: in that particular instance, that particular gate did not exist. Um, the needle's eye gate did not exist. Um, at least there's there's no evidence that it it did. Um, Jesus was speaking literally, and so if you were reading that, you would have caught that under normal circumstances. But it doesn't help to check the context, right? So finally, we get to the final tip, and that's to live it out. The Bible was never meant for us to memorize and then just forget or to do anything with it. Like it's not this this secret book that that we study and our lives remain unaffected by it. We're called to live out Scripture. Um, day in and day out. And that's why we memorize it. That's why we study it. That's why we commit so much time and energy to it. That That's why we we work to tell others about what we understand, what, what insights we see, right? We grow and we, we try to um, gain this understanding of Scripture, not as an end in and of itself, but with the end that we live godly lives that are pleasing to God, that our lives are transformed, right? And through our transformed lives, others will see Christ in us and see the way our lives were changed, the way we're living, and see what it means to be a Christian, right? And so that would be my final tip. Live what you read. Ask yourself every single time, uh, how, how does this apply to me? And at first, it may not, there may not seem like anything um, is there. Maybe you'll think of something later and the Holy Spirit will help you. Um, oh, well, you know, maybe, maybe I, I could apply it in this way. Maybe, you know, maybe um, Jesus' command to love my enemy and pray for those who persecute me can translate into me spending an extra 10 minutes in prayer today just praying for a specific person who has harmed me. Right. So that is um, the, the what everything boils down to. Live out what you read. Apply it. Okay, don't just gather knowledge for knowledge's sake, but... But go and live a Christian life. Go and live a godly life that pleases God through what you learn from your time studying Scripture. And with that, I'm going to end this video. I'll see you all in the next one.